we have done such a, a number globally on eroticism and even sexuality, which I think are two separate things. But we have done such a number to make it wrong. But God built these bodies. God built these bodies. God, God did not build shame. Shame came from human beings trying to control other human beings. So you were born in this erotic body. I was born into this erotic body. My soul lives in this body. And to be able to give my body full expression and full expansion gives my soul a louder voice with which to speak. Two, one, zero, forever. Hi, and welcome to Stellar Life Podcast. This is your host, Orion. And today I have somebody that is very special to me in my life. And she's been my mentor for years. And I learned a lot from working with her and still am learning. S Factor founder, author, and body whisperer, Sheila Kelly pioneered the feminine movement revolution over the last two decades and is the go-to authority on female embodiment and the masculine-feminine dynamic. Featured on Ellen, Oprah, and TEDx, she is a regular speaker on stages worldwide along Tony Robbins, Dave Asprey, and Mind Valley. Her own personal journey is a passionate, soulful, scientific study of body, spirit, purpose, and the compelling dynamic between masculine and feminine energy. Sheila's vision has always been constant, a world in which we are deeply connected to our soulfully erotic selves and can express every aspect of who we are freely. Her mission is to awaken our deepest truth and unleash our most potent potential. With every experience, the goal is to lead a journey from the elegant dance between feminine and masculine counterparts into the unseen depth of their power through total embodiment. I just came back from a retreat with Sheila after not being in one for a very long time, many years, and it was profound for me. And uh, so we spoke about that and uh, my personal journey. We spoke about her recent travel to Africa, where she spent some time with a hunter-gatherer tribe, and usually it's the men who go hunting with the hunters, and every biohacking, every other biohacking episode I hear is men hunting with those tribal people and talking about how phenomenal it is, and she actually sat with the women and learned a lot from them, and uh, we talked also about her journey to being accepted into those the tribe of women, which was fascinating. We also spoke about how spirituality and eroticism can live together and be expressed through the body in a very integrated way. Integrating masculine feminine within oneself and in the world, stepping into playing a bigger role in your life and stepping into the limelight in order to serve on a greater level and how to do so while putting the right boundaries and uh, ignoring the naysayer. This was a phenomenal interview. I also interviewed Sheila six years ago, um, episode 73, and it's called The Movement of the Feminine with Sheila Kelly, and you can go and check it out. Highly recommended because we covered completely different topics and and more about what S Factor is and how to connect to your body. And now, without further ado, on to the show. Hi, Sheila, and welcome to Stellar Life Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. You're so welcome. I'm, I'm so happy. And thank you for being amazing. And thank you for being a legend. Okay, let me begin. So we had an interview that I listened to yesterday night, uh, six years ago, and it was phenomenal. And it covers a lot about your background and how you became that legend that you are today when it comes to teaching women about their sensuality and femininity um, through sensual movement and through pole dancing, where the center of it is actually the woman herself, not the pole, not pole tricks, but uh, more into like an expansion and expression of all the emotions and embracing one as, as a whole being. Um, and during this process, you help women find their power, heal traumas, and own their bodies. And we dove deep into how you do it 
and we dove deep into uh, some teaching methods of yours. So if anybody wants to listen to that, that was episode 73. It was on July 18, 2017. And it's called The Movement of the Feminine with Sheila Kelly. And you can go to StellarLifePodcast.com and click on this episode. Highly recommended. It was a great, great, great episode. So welcome back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I want to start with your, uh, with your trip to Africa. Why did you go there and what did you learn? Well, I went to Tanzania in November of 2023 um, because what I teach is is coming back to the primal vitality of the body, coming back to a time uh, for the body to actually be the thing that we live through instead of our cognitive brain that we actually, there was a time in history when we were living 100% through our bodies. We got our food through our bodies. We got our water through our bodies. We built homes through our bodies. We didn't just pay people to do all these things for us or <laughs> call to our dash, right? I had to go out and find the food I was going to eat to subsist. So there is a hunter-gatherer tribe called the Hadza, and they are in Tanzania, and they're one of the last in the world. And a very good friend of mine, Eric Edmeads, um, he has been working with them or going in to study them with for his eating program called Wild Fit. Mm. And I had been doing wild fit because that's, it's about primal eating, eating to the body's rhythms. And so he invited me to come. And I was like, how could I not come? When am I ever going to go to Tanzania and hang out with the Hadza? So, uh, so we went, my husband and I went and, um, it was life changing profoundly, profoundly and also extraordinarily. Um, not rewarding. Y yes, it was rewarding, but it was hard. It was mm. hard because their lives are not easy. You know, DoorDash is easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, their lives are not easy. It, their lives can be brutal. So they are a hunter-gatherer tribe. And um, a lot of people, so people that come to study them, they pay a lot of attention to the men who are the hunters. They, they make their own bows and arrows. They make their own weapons and they barter with the Datonga tribe who is who are metal workers. And, uh, so I, I, I spent the first couple hours, you know, listening to and meeting the men, the hunters and their, their hunting stories. But I noticed off into, um, around the corner and in the distance were the women and the children. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the, lineage the ancestral lineage of the feminine i am fascinated by us i think that we are so misunderstood i think history has been told through a male gaze and uh the stories i've heard about the hadza are all about the hunters and then the hunters point of view of the women the women are very standoffish the, hunt the hunters are very like yeah come and sh let me show you what i killed yesterday but the women are very elusive and and private so i spent many hours just being on the periphery of their circle so there's a very very strong division between the men and the women and that is something i found really beautiful because this modern relationship that we live in um we we have extraordinary demands on each other to be 100 percent of what we need which i think can it could strangle any relationship right no one's going to be 100 percent what you need but watching the, the, these tribes, the women had their own campfire. The men had their own campfire. The only time I saw them interact was when they would go to bed or something about the children or something about getting food, getting water, getting berries, getting honey, because this is what the different roles are for them. So it was just a really profound and beautiful experience where I got to really observe and, and enmesh myself because after the first two days, they finally accepted me and then they started laughing at everything I did. And um, they were wonderful and they were very receptive and open, but I, then I felt part of them. And that was incredible to be a part of an ancient matriarchal circle. I, I even got to interview the chief's wife and her aunt on camera. That was amazing. And um, I saw how thoroughly, thoroughly through their bodies, they live. Wow. They don't have couches and chairs, you know. 
they don't have modern conveniences that, you know, make the body, let the body kind of rest for hours mm-hmm. at a time. They are on their feet, moving constantly, cooking constantly, crushing up nuts constantly. They're going to get water. The water, the closest water that they could drink was like three miles away. Wow. Getting it honey up. In the, yeah. Yeah. So it was so beautiful because I believe so deeply in the wisdom of the body. And I feel like we modern people of the information age and now going into the AI age, I think we've lost our bodies. And what part of what I do, I mean, people label it certain things so that the world tries to put it in a box, but there's no box for S factor. That's what I've learned over 25 years of teaching. There is no box. You can't tell, you can say it's pole dancing and she moves people through trauma. It's not any of that. It's one of those things in a world where you are inundated with everybody telling you what everything is, I think S factor is the one thing that no one can tell you what it is. You have to come and experience it. I I totally agree. Um, so you, were you the only woman that went and sat with the with those uh, tribal ladies? I started it, and then once I was started it, a few other of the women in our group would come and hang out with mm. us. But I'm definitely the one that was like there morning, noon, and night, right on the outskirts until they invited me in, and then I got to play with the children. And they, uh, yes, I was one of the people. Well, because people think, oh, the hunters, we're going to go hunt through the brush for, we're going to run and kill things and whatever. They did a lot of that. My husband went with them, but very few people understand the mystery, the magic, the mysticism of the feminine circle. It's not as in your face. Mm. It's so much more internal and emotional and intricate. Wow. And and what do you think you, you're bringing to your teachings now after being there? What's the, the core understanding there? Mm. Well, I think that it reaffirmed what I believe. That's really profoundly the biggest part of it is that it completely confirmed what I've been doing for 24 years in a very visceral way, which is the body is everything. Your body, as I said in our, our event together, your body is the stone that you throw into the pond of your life. And the clearer and the stronger and the bigger your body is, the healthier your body is, the bigger the ripples will be uh, that will cause great and beautiful results in your life. Mm. So, yeah. So let's talk about the event. Dun, 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 <laughs> okay. dun, uh, uh, wow. I, I have, it's really hard to define in words what I've been through there. Uh, through like, especially I think this last event was the, the most, the, the shifts and that happened there for me personally were insane because I honestly didn't sleep before I went to the event. I was so scared because I haven't done anything for six years and I've been through uh, childbirth and C-section and, uh, and a lot of aches and pains in my body and, and not recognizing my body. She changed a lot and she, she's not as flexible, not as strong, not as blah, 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 blah. And also, you know, my mind was, I had a postpartum depression, so rising out of that, um, it, I came, I was very scared. I saw you on the first day. It's like, almost like God was like, had us connect a few times. And I remember the first time I saw you, I was kind of like, hi, Sheila. What's up? <laughs> <You're> so scared. <laughs> <laughs> so scared. <laughs> I think what I was scared was um not being accepted, not accepting, you know, I was like in such such war with my body and now I have to almost in a way felt like I needed to perform or to be a good student and uh and also yeah, I was just really really afraid. And uh, from the get-go you were, you know, I, I had like a breakdown and I cried about what I've been through in the last six months being from Israel and and the fear because it's it's a trauma. It's like a secondary trauma. What's going on there? Um, and and just you, the way you came and hugged me, it was like I felt safe. I felt so held and I felt so loved and it was so 
utterly beautiful. And I just felt like that with, with every dance, it, it was like a light switch is turning on. I was like, okay, I'm back. It's a little lighter. It's a little brighter. It's even more brighter. Yeah. What was your... Wow. Should we explain to your audience what yeah, happened? Yeah, let's explain. It's, it's going to help. <laughs> I'm gonna, can you? I have no words. Well, it's a movement event. Uh, it's an embodiment event. It's called Huntress. It's S-Factors Huntress. And it's a very small group of women. It's This was the first time I did such a small group. And I, I eschewed... I usually do events with hundreds of women. And this time I was like, I just want to focus on each woman's individual journey. I have a skill set called body whispering that I have been honing for my whole life. And especially um, the, la the last 20 years with S Factor, but most especially the last four years since I closed the studios, I go to retreats. I'm, uh, I'm able to speak to bodies and hear bodies almost more clearly than I hear words. Mm -hmm. So I can, um, so what happens at these events is women will come. I'll have two classes and they each have about nine to 13 people in them. And I will, uh, you do, a, you, you, we talk a little bit, we get to know each other, we do a circle and then we do S movement, which is S movement is primal feminine movement moving into the integrity of the feminine body through the curves of our body through the sensuality of our bodies and through the emotional flow of our bodies so that you are using every single muscle every single pleasure center you are feeling the profound honor it is to live in a feminine body like you just like wow and what will happen is if there's any blockages, if you have been holding certain events or holding certain um, emotions in your body, when you open your body with this kind of rippling, luscious, yummy, pleasure-filled movement, is y you will release all of that shit. Mm -hmm. You will release all of that tension and all of that constriction in the fascia and the mus muscle. And, and uh, it's, it's welcomed. I welcome you to release it all so that you can become totally flow through fluid and uh, live precisely in the moment as opposed to having things from the past holding you back. It's about finding your most powerful beauty and expressing it out in the world to be a feminine radiant light for the world to see that the way that we're going right now is not working. We're yanging, right? Mm -hmm. We're yanging over masculinized culture. So I'm trying to bring the feminine back into full embodiment, full expression, so she can actually have an influence on the world. So what happens is after we warm up, each woman will dance a, a theme, right? Uh, like, where are you right now was the first theme, which is where I saw you shivering a bit mm -hmm. in your in your body. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I will give, I will, um, your body and I will have a conversation. And if I recall, the conversation we had was music. I just switched music for you. Yeah. So the first song I played was the song Hurricane. And that's the song that represents Israel uh, for the Eurovision, which is a, a song competition in Europe. And it was, it sounds like a love song, but it was written about October 7th. And it's a, you, it's a beautiful, beautiful song, and the the video is really cool. They have like lots of modern dancers, and there it's very emotional song. And I've been listening to that listening to that song a lot, and and I kind of thought that this was the song that will help me release my emotions. <laughs> Little did I know that the body whisperer in the room is going to call. <laughs> it's going to put something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> a little mm -hmm. <laughs> well because your body was craving your body was craving something to push against mm -hmm. she she couldn't feel where she began or where she ended when you first started she couldn't feel herself in the world yes, i agree like you are so true sheila i wow thank you for that i i i you help me understand me now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I will help you understand yourself better through body whispering, 
through understanding the state of the body, mm. the, the, the erotic state of the body, but the emotional state of the body and the state of the feminine within your mm. body. So what was happening, the, the song was beautiful, but you weren't in a beautiful state. Mm. You were seeking something to feel something. So music is a huge tool I use when I body read and body whisper because music is emotion in motion. It is emotional energy. It is uh, vital energy. It is a life force energy, and so is the feminine. So to me, it's not about dancing to a song. It's dancing with a song. It's allowing a song to move you and you to move the song. Mm. So if anyone knows the band Smug, Ma Smug Mang, it's a kind of a grizzly hip-hop band, and uh when that song came on, it was like uh, it was like your body turned inside out in a good way. Yes, like like everything that was inside just came out, and it was hot. It was sexy. It was emotional. It was powerful. Yeah, it it just it was an outlet. I. I thought that I was more in probably sadness about what happened, but there was so much rage in this body. And you, uh, the moment you put that song on, it almost like felt like there was a lightning going through my body. And she's like, she wakes up. <laughs> she wakes up. Thank you so much for that. That was amazing. And and not only me, you know what? Uh, every Every woman in that retreat, every woman that I saw in our small group had such a magnificent beautiful transformation from you know feeling beautiful to 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 healing um the the pain and guilt of of losing an ex-husband to uh to uh, um you know living your life in the masculine and then all of a sudden allowing yourself to to be soft and beautiful again. They were like every every woman woman was so beautiful and every woman had her own transformation and release and and I think all of us are are still bathing in this beautiful experience um on the WhatsApp group and um I asked my friends um I asked my friends to to share um questions for this interview. And and I have I have a question from um, Shelley, and she says, "How do the masculine and feminine mature collectively, and how do they collaborate col collaborate with each other?" And she's talking about the masculine and feminine within oneself, and also the masculine and feminine in the world, men and women. Mm -hmm. It's a very deep question. The masculine follows the feminine when the feminine is present. So if the feminine is present, meaning thoroughly in her body, completely in her body, the masculine will, will track her and follow her. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the biological story of the purpose, the biological purpose of a feminine body to the biological purpose of a masculine body. Um, but what's happened is we're in a, we're in a twisted society. We're, we're in a twisted world of uh, toxic masculine dominance that's basically out of control at the moment because the feminine has disappeared. Even us who identify more as feminine, we, we, we hush our feminine and we elevate our masculine because that's what's valued, right. right? That's what's valued in the world. Masculine is achieving and singularly focused and um, accumulating and um, uh, goal oriented, singularly focused. I mean, they're, it's a very different energy that the masculine in all of us is the hunter mm. hunting out there for sustenance. The feminine in us is life. Mm. Life doesn't have to hunt out there for sustenance. Life is just life. So when we stir up the life within your bodies and you awaken all the pleasure and all the curves and all the beauty of the feminine body within all of the emotional flavors, you become life again. Mm. Because many of us have put a pause on the being life because we're so busy out there hunting for, you know, the career, the job, the be the best mom, be the best this, be the yes. best that. So how they dance together is allowing both elements of yourself. And I'm talking about in, within one body 
uh, is a recognizing. Number one is awareness. Mm. Awareness is the most important tool for body. Because once you become aware and recognize, well, what part of me is masculine? Where is my masculine attributes? Like for, for you, your masculine right now, Orion, is that you you created a shape for this interview. You've written it down. You've got questions. That's your masculine and you're filling it. But my toes are kind of like spread out. Yeah. Moving, <laughs> and I just, my body doesn't stop moving. Yeah. The moment I still, I see you, I'm like, my body goes like, Oh, it's Sheila. La, 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the truth right there. That's the truth. Uh, think of it this way. Think of it this way. Have you ever had a child's coloring book? Has anyone just. I think have. About I had one on the plane book. back that got delayed for 24 hours. Yes. We use that coloring book. The outline, the outline of the figure you're coloring, that's the masculine. The colors and the shapes you put in and the way you put the colors in, that's the feminine. Beautiful. You have the best metaphors for everything. I think a lot about it and I study it. And I'm, I, I'm a bit of a scientist of the soma, uh, a scientist of the emotional and the erotic body. It's my Ooh. science. It's my love. It's my passion. You should, you should have an outfit of a scientist and have a dance with it. <laughs> that would be lovely. Next time I will. I love, it. I love that idea. Yes. So I hope that helps to answer a little bit of the question, which is the feminine has to rise and she has to come present and be the riveting, extraordinary life force that she is so that the masculine knows how, who to protect, who to, who to provide for and who to serve. Mm. Because as Joseph Campbell, I know Joseph Campbell is in, he was a mythologist in the 70s and 80s. He actually is one of the people that George Lucas went to to help create Star Wars, the hero's journey. But he studied mythology in uh, all over the world, in every culture, in every time, in every age that he could find. And he said that when um, he, he compiled all of these mythologies of masculine feminine together, it all came down to this quote, which is woman is life and man is the servant of life. Oh. I like that. So think about that within your own being. How do you fill yourself up with life and energy and joy and movement and laughter and song, dance and, 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 and intuition and knowing and deep mystic energy that the feminine has in her back pocket and the masculine will drive you forward toward goals. Yes, that's amazing. So profound and powerful. And I think in the world with men and women, it's just about, we can't force consciousness upon people. It's an individual journey. We can just shine our light and, and people transform by us shining our light as bright as we possibly can. Yes. Yes. So I have a question from Desiree. Is there a process in which a woman's erotic body comes back online regardless of the specific circumstances of her journey? <laughs> yes, there is a specific process. The process is S factor. The, uh -huh, the yeah. movement, the, the way that the movement is designed is it's to start at ground zero, which starts with the pleasure of breath, focusing mm. awareness on the pleasure of breath entering your body and noticing how that breath undulates your body and your spine, right? If you follow that inhale, you'll follow that inhale with your lungs expanding and that reaches your body into a large open reach. And then you exhale and you allow that air to leave and you allow your spine to concave. So you're opening, you're closing. That is the very kernel of understanding the feminine genius, the rhythm your unique feminine rhythm in your body starts at your deepest, longest, slowest, most pleasurable breath. That breath will lead you into circular movement. And then we're going to get that circular movement even bigger and more, uh, uh, more uh, open, more closed, more expressive. So we're mm -hmm. freeing the body to express what it's feeling. But uh, that's the purpose of the movement is getting women to express pleasure and um, expansion of self, expansion mm. of movement through the body. And I do it in such a, as factor is so intricately designed that anyone can do it, whether you are able to move a lot and are very athletic, or mm. if you are not able to move a lot, 
you can still do this movement. It's about turning on the five feminine right. geniuses. Yes, because there are, there are issues that are stored in our tissues. I mean, for me, um, I guess being a mother is a lot of giving and not a lot of getting. And I breastfed, <laughs> I breastfed my son for three years. And I guess my posture got like this, like the whole chest area got really locked. So every time I, I'm still working on opening it and making it more flexible, it's quite rigid, but it was, it just, it gives me a sense of freedom when I do it. And I'm, I found myself in the car starting to just like, okay, let's every day we'll open it just a little bit more, a little bit more and connect because this is our, this is our center for, I, I guess. I guess the, here and the third eye are our centers to connect to creation. Um, I have another talking about connecting to creation. Another question that came up in the group is um, the manifestation weaving of the erotic body and the soul. Because we did soul dance. So how does soul, connecting to soul, play into connecting to our body how do we connect the the soul and the body and and move in a soulful way where we get like uh, i guess otherworldly healing um i i think i kind of experienced that in my soul dance because i did i, I there was a break so i'm like i'll just do some breath work <laughs> and then activate my god molecule in my brain <laughs> and then, and then the, the like my dance was very like a lot of shaking and kundalini and and light moving through. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So here, here's what I would say. Um, we, because we no longer live through our bodies, we quiet them. Mm -hmm. We quiet the more we, we as women quiet, the more erotic elements of our body, mm. the parts of our body that have brought us shame Yes. And we all have experienced shame of one sort or another because we are showing too much or we're not showing enough or we asked for it or all the things society says to girls and women that lives in our body. So we've quieted and shut the body down. So we try to leap over and I'm going to use a phrase I use. We, we've tried to leap over the qualities, the inherent qualities of a feminine body. Your body, if you are a feminine creature, probably does some sort of curving like an S shape. Mm -hmm. Some sort of curving. It could be the curve of your shoulder into your arms. The feminine body is designed to attract attention. It's designed to emulate something to hunt. Because we've quieted that part of our body and we still want to connect with source on some level, we have religion. Um, we have a soul dance where we're actually moving it through vibration, through breath, like you did, which was beautiful. But I would encourage you to go back into the integrity of the curves and sensuality and pleasure. Yeah, I felt I felt disconnected from the curve. Like spirituality was one thing and body was completely different. And that threw me that threw me off for the rest of the day. Because I was I all of a sudden I was very confused. Like, oh I went out there and almost like left my body. You were hunting for the soul dance. So you kind of used, used masculine energy, which is that you said, I'm going to do breath work, right? So you tried to control it as opposed to trusting that if you simply start with touch and breath and curve mm -hmm. and sensuality, just trust that your soul is in there. Your soul is in your body. So if you simply use the intention of bringing this gorgeous feminine body to an undulating aliveness that whatever soul you have in there, and we have to retrain, right? We have to get the soul to plug back into the body because the soul has been going, body, wake up. I have things to say. But we've been told, no, right. don't touch your breasts. No, don't move your hips. No, don't show your cleavage. Mm-hmm. No, don't be that overt, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of the feminine body all over the right. world is shut down and linearized so that when you want to find a connection between your feminine body and your soul... It feels like spirituality is different than money. Spirituality is different than, than erotic body. Spirituality is like a standalone thing where in reality, I, like the, the most sacred expression is integration of the whole. 
for me, um, I'm just like, I saw a clear, almost like a separation. And then there was some shaking in my body where the soul was moving through the body in a way. And, and you kind of called me on like how to like move and trust. Cause I was so confused in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. When I teach, I'm teaching the body and when the body is ready to learn is when I will provide information to the body and to your magical mind. But when the mm. body is going through a process, which yours was going through a process at that point, you were having um, tremors and you were having breath connection and you had left your body in a kind of spiritual way. To, I wanted you to complete mm -hmm. that process so that you could feel a sense of closure and container, your body containing yourself. That's what I felt. I felt like that was three minutes. I wanted more. I wanted more. Like this was just the beginning of the expression and the integration. And there is more there. Yeah, there is more there. There's more there. And Always. it's simpler. It's less. It, you, you have to do less. Less is more. Because the body. Really? Thank you. That's more. like my that whole is. life journey. <laughs> <laughs> less is more, girl. Less is more. And it's really, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's really quite beautiful when you surrender, when you surrender trying, you know, when you surrender your masculine, mm. which is the one that's trying to, to, to control everything. Like, I know, I know what a soul dance is. I'm going to do breath work. That's leaving your body into a thought, right? If you right. just go into my breath, my body and trust that your body, everyone's body was born to be an erotic creature. That's what we are. We, we propagate the species by being erotic creatures, but we also propagate our lives by allowing erotic energy to live through us 24 seven for our benefit, not for the benefit of a lover, not for sexuality, but for right. the, the erotic is cellular aliveness. That is what it is. It is, is how much aliveness can you have coursing through your body? I guess God is erotic. Yeah. Hello. Wow. God is erotic. There's nothing. We have, we have done such a, a number globally on eroticism and even sexuality, which I think are two separate things. Mm -hmm. But we have done such a number to make it wrong. God built these bodies. God, God did not build shame. Shame right. came from human beings trying to control other human beings. So you were born in this erotic body. I was born into this erotic body. My soul lives in this body and to be able to give my body full expression and full expansion gives my soul a louder voice. Yeah. Cause, cause God, God lives in every cell of our bodies and, and everything is interconnected regardless. So there is no separation. Um, it just the mind, the critical mind is, uh, is, is, is messing us up. It is. It's, it's taking it's taking the feminine out of themselves. Mm. So many things, so many things about the science of the body mm. is that the critical mind has, think of the critical mind as the, you know, Popeye's muscle. It's, it's so overly muscled in our culture. And the magical mind, which is the feminine mind, is atrophied in our global culture. We don't, we don't focus as much on the quality of life. We don't focus as much on the radiant, beautiful life energy. We focus on uh, ownership and accumulating and fighting and dominating. And instead of actually being uh, present in pleasure, and that is the feminine being present in pleasure and valuing life. If we were living with a balanced culture, we would not be in these vile wars all over the Amen. world. We would not have this kind of violence. Yes. Yes. We spoke six years ago and so much, so much has happened in the last six years. We had lovely COVID. You had um, uh, the documentaries, Trip Down, Rise Up. Uh, now you speak with Mind Valley and with uh, Dave Asprey at the Biohacking Conference. Um, how does your, because this is the question I asked you last time, like how does your leadership evolve since you started until today, but now how did it evolve from six years ago till today, having, you know, no more physical studio in LA, which I had the privilege of being a part of uh, for a little while and, uh, you know, going online and now reaching out to 
probably millions now <laughs> with all the platforms that you are evolving and becoming a part of uh, and which is this beautiful expansion of you. So h- how are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing, Sheila? <laughs> <laughs> well, Orion, let me get, let me lay back on a couch. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Um, I, I, the last six years have been maybe six of the most seminal moments in my life, most impactful. Uh, the business itself has changed. Uh, we did a pivot. We closed all the studios at COVID. And now we are licensing teachers and the teachers are, because I can't be everywhere all at once, Mm -hmm. even though there's a great movie by that name, I can't be everywhere all at once. Uh, And I need to uh, focus my, uh, my presence in being a leader in this movement of a feminine embodiment. I need to focus my attention. What I learned is I need to focus my attention much more uh, specifically while I can train other women to open studios, I can train teachers to serve women. It's incredible. I'm so blessed. S Factor is so blessed. But we have like larger, the largest teacher training groups that we've ever had. We have licensed therapists coming to learn about the SOMA work we do. We have yoga instructors, Pilates instructors. We have regular moms. We have regular women of all ages coming to teacher train. Because that they know that that is how they create change in their own their own world in their own neighborhood with their own friends is to is to bring it to them because this like I said at the very beginning of our talk is not something you can say oh well it's you know it's this you go to this place and you get your hair done it's not that simple it's like it's so life changing you're literally changing the pattern of the that the world has put your body the shape of your the shape your body has been put in in this society with tightened musculature with tucked tail with furrowed brows Mm. with shallow breathing Mm. we have put ourselves in these box shapes and as such is about breaking that down so the teacher training is huge and then um i have been you know I believe that S factor is the strongest manifestation tool on the planet, Mm. meaning when you're put the animal of your body into full voice, Mm. and that's what we're doing, right? You put the animal of your body into full voice and you create a, a vortex of energy with the circular movement that we teach. And you get let go of all the blockages, all the obstacles in your body everything that you desire will come to you. Wow. And I'm living proof of it. Mm. And so I said to myself, when I closed the studios, I want to speak in personal growth circles and I want to speak to larger groups. Mm. And this year I spoke to 5,000 people. Oh, and I want to speak to both men and women. So my work is expanded to, to the masculine. Yeah. So I'm working with men, I'm working with women and I'm working with couples how exciting. This is so exciting and beautiful. It is exciting. It is exciting. It, and it's scary because it's, it's new and I'm growing. And I, as you said, I am expanding enormously. And uh, it's, it's scary. Yes. And it's extraordinary. And I say to myself, you know, I now know the power of manifestation movement, of manifesting what you want. So now I'm not just going to throw any desire out there. I actually have to be sure mm. what I what I want. But um, I spoke to 3,000 people in March. I'm speaking to 3,000 at Dave's ask, uh, a, a biohacking conference. So it it is my platforms are growing. And Dave was on this show, by the way. I interviewed him a few years ago. Yes, he's awesome. He's great. I love him. He's becoming a good friend. Oh, yeah. So that's how it's changed. It's changed a lot and for the better. My soul is happier. My body's happier. I'm in Mon- uh, Montana and I've got, this is my, this is my studio, my ass factor studio. And I teach over there. Mm. I've got a pole over there and um, I love it. I I'm living, I'm living my dream. That's beautiful. And w- with this dream and expansion and every spiritual teacher, when he, when when they grow and they expand, you always have the 
you know, the people that absolutely love them. And then there is always online trolls and bullies and people that are unkind. Um, so how do you, within this expansion, create the boundaries? Um, and also when you come back home to your loved one, to your husband, and you're even bigger than you were, how does that play into the dynamic of the relationship? Okay, those are two very big questions. I know. <laughs> That's a, so go I'll do the first one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have this much tolerance for what I am calling the age of rage. We're living in the age of rage. Everybody has pent up rage and everybody wants to be heard and be seen. And we live in a cacophonous age of rage. And I have zero tolerance for that. Mm. because I think that is ma very, very masculine. It's the over-yanging. It's, it's, it's our Popeye muscle is pulling us off the course. I am about love mm. and freedom and peace and pleasure. I block and report and you don't have access to my feeds, my social media, nothing. I ignore hate. Mm. I will not give it energy. Mm -hmm. I give energy to life, to love, to mm. women, to freedom to the pleasure of this very short journey that we're on mm. in this lifetime. So I am, I, that's part of what I teach, as you know, is I teach really right. deep, conscious awareness of boundaries. There's right. the intimate boundary of your skin. There's the boundary of your glycerin bubble. And there are psychic boundaries. Yeah. And I use my psychic boundaries to mosquito snap, yes. and block, block and report. Yeah. I love that. And the reason why I'm asking that is because me, like I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I want to play a bigger game and go out there and speak and, you know, become more visible where I was pretty much in hiding for the last five years. I even hid my pregnancy because I was afraid that something bad's going to happen. Um, and that was a lonely journey. So I like, must have been. Oh, uh, yeah. I must so, have been hard. But um, I'm like, how I'm, I'm looking at you and I'm like, how does she do that? How does she, how does she able to like, even within class with all these women and all this, you let them, you give them space for such huge emotions. How do you still keep your peace and then go home and be in peace with your loved one? You know, it's, it's, it takes a very strong woman to do that and a very, uh, I guess, experienced woman to do that. <laughs> it's so interesting that the great question, Orion. Um, one of the things that has happened in the last six years is I've come to peace with knowing my skills mm. and my gifts and being at peace with being able to read bodies and, and whisper bodies and to tune in and channel, uh, channel from source through the body. Yeah. Uh, that's once I came to peace with it, and was like, okay, I didn't even know what that meant. Like I, I, but I do know when I watch a body that there's an, an energy that comes through me that is able to speak to that body in a mm. way that is revelatory for them and for me. Uh, so coming to peace with that has um, freed up all of the doubt or all of the, is that real? All of my questioning of myself. Yes. And I'm yeah. And so I'm able to use the boundaries I teach, the glycerin bubble, this everything I just talked to you about, yes, those yes. boundaries, they're paramount. They're absolute paramount for any woman who's in the public eye to cultivate because as I said, we're in an age of rage. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to tear everybody down. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't even believe how heinous some of the things people are dare to write, but I don't even give it my time. I won't even read it. Because you got a bigger mission and you know who you are. I guess it goes back to, to know thyself and, and you, you just focus on, um, I took a training with Robert Allen, a speaker training, and he said, like, you can have a speaking gig and there everybody's going to smile, but there is this one frowny face in the audience and then you immediately go to him. It's like, don't look at the frowny faces. Always cater to... <laughs> I, always I love it. that so hard. Yeah, I always I look at so the people hard. that love you and, 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 and care for you. And there was another tip where like um, a friend of mine said she's uh she she's from uh, uh Beam Minerals. She has a company called Beam Minerals. 
She said that before she does a speaking gig, she talks to four people from the four corners of the audience, if it's a very large audience, and she makes friends with them. And then she's got friends in the audience. I love it. I love that so much. Yeah. I love the don't look at the frowny face. That's a really good. And I agree yeah, with that. I agree with that. But think, think, think about this. We live in the economy of uh -huh. attention. Wherever you give your attention, you're giving energy. Choose your attention wisely. So exactly. Don't give it to the frowny face. Don't give it to the haters. Give it to where you want to grow and fertilize I your garden. That. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And so when, when I do get home, Richard uh, is a safe space yeah. for me. And I tuck into his, sh I tuck into his uh, shoulder mm. right here. And I just kind of melt because it is an enormous amount mm. of energy to hold and to serve. So it, it does take some time to recover. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm at the very tail end of that recovery process because it was just a yes, week ago. It's beautiful. And you're a magnificent creature. <laughs> Thank you for being on this planet. Um, my husband is that for me too. He's, he's the one I can lean on. And the, and the one thing that came to mind is when, when I serve, it's almost like the same lesson again and again and again. Don't do it yourself. Surrender. I allow God, the angel creation, to just like flow through you and do the work for you. Because I like if if I'm put on this earth to serve, then there I got backup, right? I got my ancestors, I got my angels, I got my guides, I got God, I got everybody to like push me forward with that. What are your three top tips to live in a stellar life, and where can people find you? Well, you can find me on Instagram at Sheila Kelly S and S Factor, obviously S Factor official. Those are Instagram where I am. Um, you can find me at sfactor.com and, um, number one, dance every friggin' day. Um, uh, put on, uh, essential oils or scents, uh, uh, fill your body with pleasure too. Whether it's an aroma you put on, like I love, I love uh, the spruce essential oils and I love to put it on. It just lights me up. And, uh, I would say the last thing is to intentionally allow your radiant energy and your smile out in as love. Intentionally oh. pierce people with love. <gasps> oh, I love that. Yeah. Like intentionally. Yeah, I do. You do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I it can to you too. With, like zoom love like this. And it's supposed to do hearts. Here we go. Oh. Ah! Ah! Okay. Well, oh my God. That is so cool. <laughs> Amazing. So thank it. you, Sheila. I really appreciate you. I'm so grateful for you and I love you very much. Thank you so much. It was my honor with you. Being with you was my honor. Thank you. 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 And thank you, uh, listeners. Remember to dance every day. Fill your body with pleasure intentionally intentionally allow your radiance to shine and pierce people with your gaze and with love and have a stellar life this is orion till next time <laughs> <laughs>